Hello and welcome. Please pause the video, read the problem, and try it on your own. And then press play and see if we agree on the way it can be solved. Okay, so this problem says that we're solving the equation 4 times 3x squared plus 2 minus 9 equals 8x squared plus 7. Emily wrote 4 times 3x squared plus 2 equals 8x plus 16 as her first step, which property justifies Emily's first step. So with this question, I might start by rewriting what they're giving us uh, below in this area down here, or if you're doing it on paper, in any space that you have is available. So first we have 4 times 3x squared plus 2 minus 9 equals 8x squared plus 7. Then in the second step, on the left-hand side here, it looks like we still have 4 times 3x squared plus 2 close parentheses. I notice there's no longer a negative 9 there. I'll leave that space blank. On the right, though, we have 8x squared plus, not 7 this time, but 16. So there's two changes here. The minus 9 is no longer written. And instead of 7, we have 16. So what could have happened that, that did that? Well, remember, there's two sides to the equation separated by the equal sign, right? There's this left-hand side and this right-hand side. And Whatever we do to one side, we balance the equation by also doing it to the other. So here, in order to get rid of negative 9, they would have had to add 9 to both sides, right? Negative 9 plus 9, that would give us the 0 here. You can think of this empty spot as having nothing, plus nothing, 0. And 7 plus 9 is also 16. So that just means that we now know they added 9 to both sides. When you add to both sides of an equation, that's called the addition property of equality. The commutative property of addition. What would that look like in this problem? Well, it might be something like this. Maybe on the left-hand side, there's instead of, let's say, 3x squared plus 2, 2 plus 3x squared. So there they would change the order, right? Commuted these two terms around. That would still be equivalent. That's the commutative property. And then, sorry, instead of minus 9, <coughs> we can put minus 9 there. And on the right-hand side, maybe something like 7 plus x squared. Uh, 8x squared. Now that's another example of the commutative property, but we don't have that here. The orders remain pretty much the same. The multiplication property of equality. That might mean we're multiplying something to both sides. So let's say I double both sides. Instead of 4 times um, 3x squared plus 2, I would have 8 groups of 3x squared plus 2. I double that. Instead of minus 9, I have minus 18. Instead of 8x squared, I have 16x squared. And instead of 7, I have 14. So in this case, because I doubled everything or multiplied everything by 2, I'm using the multiplication property of equality. That's not what we're doing here. The distributive property of multiplication over addition, what would that look like? Well, in this problem, it applies really to this term, the 4 times 3x squared uh, plus 2. So let's just explore that really quick, and then we're done. 3x squared plus 2. In this, we're distributing the 4 or multiplying it to both 3x squared and 2, over addition. It's literally, you're distributing it over the addition sign. So that would get you four groups of 3x squared, that would be 12 groups of x squared, and four groups of 2 is 8. So if we saw this appear in the problem somewhere, that would be an example of the distributive property, but that's not what we see here. All right, now I suggest that you stop the video, go back to the beginning, and try it again on your own to see if you understand it. See if you can create an example for each choice so that you're fluent in each of these properties. Thanks.